Mr. Uh, Devin Siebert. He's going to be doing some dynamic roughing tonight on the lathe. This is a Haas SL10. We're going to be using a button tool. Uh, here is the blueprint for the part. It is a fly reel spool. This is a fishing. Uh, this is a fishing reel used for fly fishing. He has already turned this diameter and that diameter. The dynamic turning will be roughing out this stock here in a, in a kind of a looping shape, and then it will clean out the corners like that. It's going to be leaving 10 or 20 thousandths on all these faces for a finish cut. That's why we do dynamic roughing, is so that it gets rid of the stock we don't need as soon as possible and leaves us just the right amount of stock for a nice, slow, easy, pretty finish cut. So, Haas SL10, here's what the cone looks like. Um, he's doing dynamic roughing. Uh, as we go down here further, you'll see there are X, Z, I, and K to uh, control that, that looping type motion. Right. And I understand that we don't get much bird nesting on the uh, chips either. So go ahead and hit the button. And you have the coolant turned off, right? Block the leak. Here we go. So we're gonna let it cut. He's really close to the chuck there. Let's watch the motion. Speed rate. Okay. Yep. There it's plunging in. And the cycle time, do you know? About six or seven minutes. Six or seven minutes. These guys on the manual lathes are taking about 45 minutes to an hour to do this same thing. It's like an area clearing. The chips are breaking really nice. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and shut the door now and let him go full speed. Turn on your coolant. Watch the code go by. And the GO2 and GO3 are where it makes the looping motion. That's it's kind of plunging in. And then it goes across. All right. One more time. How about you turn that coolant off? Let's open the door and let's have another look. That's okay. Nice for aluminum. Do you know how much depth of cut roughly that is? I believe about 20, 30 probably could have gone more than that, but it's good to be conservative anyway. So it's, it's shaping up nicely here. I'll shut the door and let him run cooling again, and we'll look more at this part. So the, the decision the student has to make here is how are they going to get rid of the stock also that it gets left on here, because we have to chuck up on this end of it to do all this work. Then when they flip it over, they have to cut into the back side like this and uh, also produce this counter bore. I've seen people do this with a, a milling cutter and also with a, 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 a face plunging, like a, a face plunging boring bar, a tree panning type tool. Did make 
make a nesting fixture to put on the inside groove of this part. Um, mainly so we can cut this uh, outer groove on the inside like he had said as well as the chamfer on these outside edges. A, nest, a nesting fixture, you mean a, it, it, it surrounds the whole part? It surrounds it on both sides of this groove, uh, kind of like a clamshell. Okay, does it clamp down on it too, or just a clamshell? Uh, we're just putting on like a clamshell and using the chuck, the four draw chuck on the manual lathe right. to clamp down so we can then do this work here manually. All right. Yeah, this one presents a lot of good challenges. This uh, tool path was done uh, with dynamic motion in Mastercam. So right here, let's look at these speed rates one more time. 6,000 speed rate. We could have gone maybe a little more, don't you think? Yes, sir. We just bumped it down a little bit, like you said, to be a little more conservative. We only have one button insert, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and turn the cooling off and have another look at it. This is where we are after six minutes. Get a little better idea of that tool motion now. It's leaving a big radius in the corners goes back and gets that at the end. So I pumped the feed rate up to 9,000 now, and that chip is breaking good. And he's going to turn that coolant back on. All right. So we're going about nine thousandths now. It should cut a little bit of time off of it. generated in Mastercam X8, right? Or X7? Oh, we did. I think we did this one in X8. Yeah, we have X7 and X8 loaded. These guys learned on X7 and then we upgraded to X8 and left them both on there. Okay. Turn the cooling off one more time and have one more look at it. And I believe it's going to start doing that cornering here a little bit. Yeah. To a thin wall. That shit breaks a lot better that way. dynamic tool path, but to be as conservative as they can with them. We 
you have to be very careful not to ever bury the tool and also not to exceed the gripping capacity of our, of our tool holder. Just about ready. And now it's doing the corner clearing. It's going to concentrate on the, on just on the corner. Keeping in contact almost the whole time. using Mastercam X7 on the capstone project for our class called MAC 233 making a fly reel